Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you have seen this equation before in my previous videos. This was uh, what we were using for virtual work when we have a single point load on a beam and we wanted to find the deflection at that point load. So this is a great uh, little formula that we can use because typically uh, as long as you can get the moment in terms of x, uh, then you can solve the right hand side and, uh, and then do a little bit of rearranging to find the deflection at the point load when you have this type, when you have a structure with a single point load and you wanna find the deflection at that point load. Now, often the problems aren't that easy and you want to find uh, deflection maybe somewhere where there isn't a point load or deflection on a, on a beam, maybe at a point load, but on a beam that's subjected to more than one load. So virtual work like we were doing with this expression only works if there's a single applied load. Um, and uh, that's not always the case. So in order to solve other cases, we need Castigliano's theorem. And basically Castigliano's theorem is, can be written like this. It's yj is equal to the partial derivative of the total elastic strain energy with respect to um, the applied load that's happening right at the point that we're interested in taking the deflection at. And so if the total elastic strain energy U is equal to this integral, then the way that we work that into this expression is we, uh, we have the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to PJ. Uh, basically, we just write this as the integral 0 to L. Uh, we're going to separate out one of these M's. So we'll write M over EI, just like that. And then we'll have DM, the partial, or delta, I guess, the partial derivative of M with respect to PJ. And we're going to leave in that DX. So basically what we do is we just find the expression for M along the span of the beam. And then uh, that's going to be some function in terms of x. And then we'll take the partial derivative of that uh, with respect to the point load that we're, we're looking for deflection at. And, and then we'll basically just multiply those two together. And then we'll carry out the integration. And then we'll actually pretty simply be able to find the displacement. So if you imagine that we have a cantilever beam that looks something like this, then as we go from left to right, if we call that x as we're increasing our distance, then the, in, the expression for the internal moment is going to be m is equal to negative px minus one half wx uh, wx squared minus ma. Now you can easily find this by doing a virtual cut, taking the free body diagram and summing the forces, you know, with the internal shear force and all that. And we'll actually do this full example in the next video. I just want to go over the method and what what this kind of solution looks like when you're working through it in this video. So this is the expression for the internal moment of this problem. And so if we take the partial derivative of, uh, of m with respect to pj, because we're going to need to substitute that in, what we do is we write that, the partial derivative of m delta m over delta p. In this case, if we were looking for the, display, the deflection at point a, which is what we would be looking for typically in a problem like this, then um, so we would have pa. The deflection is going to give us the eventually the deflection at the point that that applied point load is at. And the partial derivative of this with respect to P. So basically when you take the partial derivative of something, if you remember, you treat everything else as a constant and you treat that thing as the variable. So the partial derivative of this whole expression, well, this first term is going to be negative x. And then this will all be treated as a constant. So that goes to zero and this will all be treated as a constant. So that goes to zero. So now what we have to do is we just fill in this expression here. So we have the deflection at point J, our point of interest, or the point where the applied load is applied. We're going to be looking for the deflection at point A. So this is equal to the partial derivative of total strain energy with respect to PA. Again, this is the point load at point A that we're looking for or that we're considering. So when we go fill out this expression, we can pull out the EI. So we'll have 1 over EI times the integral zero to L. Now we're just left, we've already pulled this out. So we, now we just have M times uh, delta M over delta PA. So here we have the expression for M. So this will be negative, in this example, it will be negative PX minus one half uh, WX squared minus MA. And then we multiply that with uh, the partial derivative of the moment with respect to PA, which is just negative X. So that's just going to be times negative x, and this is all dx. 
And from here on out, it's a pretty standard integration. We're just integrating basically with respect to x here, so that's going to be our variable. And then uh, you can simplify all this, and in these problems, you would be given PA, MA, W, you'd be given EI, and then we'll simply just get a numerical answer uh, for the deflection at A, basically in like meters or millimeters or something, and then that would just be the final answer. So that's just an example basically of how we apply Castigliano's theorem to an actual system that has more than one load. Now, if you had a very similar situation like this, where we had a beam that basically has more than one load, but say we were asked to find the deflection here at point A, um, and there's no applied load here at point A. Then what we do with Castigliano's theorem is we apply a dummy load, which basically we're just going to draw on uh, a, a point load here, and we're just going to call that, uh, basically we're going to call that QA, or Q in the subscript of whatever point we're, we're looking for. Now we're going to set this equal to zero, but otherwise we're going to follow the same method. So if we don't substitute in the numerical value of zero just yet for QA, then the, uh, the internal bending moment as we move from left to right, the expression for it here is pretty similar. It's just going to be equal to negative Q times X minus one half WX squared minus MA. And again, I'm going to do a full example on this one as well, uh, where we actually get this based on the shear and the virtual cut. But just so you know, this is what it would be. And so then when we take the partial derivative of this expression, m, delta m, delta q, a, uh, well, we treat q as the variable and everything else is constants. So we get this, uh, we get negative x as the partial derivative. And then when we go to substitute it into this expression, we get very similar stuff. We have y, a is going to be equal to that partial derivative d uh, delta u over delta qa and then we have 1 over ei and at this point when we substitute them in as uh, basically m and delta, uh, delta m over delta qj we're going to set q equal to zero now when we plug it back in and so this whole term will go to zero and then we'll just get negative one half wx squared minus ma times the partial derivative of m with respect to qa, and, and that was negative x. And then we'll close that off with a dx. And then again, from here out, it's pretty standard integration. And uh, you would be given, like I said, w, ma, and ei, and you'd be able to figure out what the deflection is at point a, even though there wasn't actually a real applied load there. We just temporarily substituted in a dummy point load with a magnitude of zero. So this is a pretty cool way that this works uh, and it's pretty convenient because if we were just dealing with virtual work method, as soon as we have more than a single point, anything more than a single point load, nothing works anymore. Um, but with Castigliano's theorem, uh, basically we can apply this to all sorts of different combinations and even we can find deflections at points where there is basically no actual applied load. Alright guys, so hopefully that just kind of clears up how to solve these types of problems and go through using these steps. And uh, join me in the next two videos where we're going to go over solving this example where we actually have an applied load at the point that we want to find the deflection at. And then we'll also solve this example where we don't have an applied load but we still want to find the deflection at some point on a cantilever beam.